Warning, please don't have a seizure while watching this video. Dark Souls, referred to by gaming journalists as uh, John McAfee being in a room filled with fecal matter, this game has a reputation of being extremely hard. And I haven't beaten it. So, in light of my current conquest to become the ultimate gamer, and also because I hate myself, I decided that the first time I beat it, it's gonna be deathless. Here's the rules. No cheating, except for twice I'll explain when we get there, and also anytime I die, I restart immediately. No scouting, because that is lame and I am not. First though, in case you're unfamiliar, allow me to give you a brief run through of the lore of Dark Souls. <clears throat> Long ago, in the far off year of 2009, dragons lived peacefully on the surface, and all life on Earth was both simple and clean. However, far beneath the surface lay a door that held all the hearts of the universe. A door known as Kingdom Hearts. As the door was opened, the Heartless connected with powerful nobodies, and a council was formed to peacefully relocate the dragons to another location and then this guy crinkled on a bonfire or something and humans lived happily ever after for a while until they didn't because Kingdom Hearts is closing and now you have to go fix it. Oh and also this guy gives you a key. I hope you understood all of that because there will be no further explanations. Anyways, welcome to jail. We've been in prison for the crime of unlawfully being alive, for which the punishment is death, or alternatively, murder. Before we can properly atone for our sins, however, first we gotta meet up with this guy, so that we may receive his juices, and also our mission to hit that motherfucking bell and figure out why we can't die. And then he dies. Don't worry though, he'll be back later. Then, after paying the traditional American fine of murder to be released from prison, we call it the bird of death and finally arrive in Fire Lake Shrine. Firelink Shrine is the safe zone of Dark Souls, where we can relax and prepare for the journey ahead. And because our journey is going to be a lot more interesting than others, we have quite a bit of preparing to do. There's a bunch of loose souls lying around for us to collect and consume, including the ashes of Grandpa and his friends. And after a quick run through the bone zone, we can head back to the bonfire and die. We can, we can head back and die. Side note, I will be dying many times. And because audibly pointing them all out would take the lesser part of a century, I'll be counting them with this handy little numerical device instead. But I mean, since we're here and we're talking about it and I'm being honest, I should probably let you know that I also died to the thick donkus once and also did the mockery off a ledge. All right, hello, number four here. I have killed the things and grabbed the souls and I did not die this time. And now that we've finally conquered the tutorial and the safe zone, we can finally enter the elderly home. All the enemies in Undead Burg are just shambling mounds with things that vaguely resemble swords, and we're here to fulfill the job of professional plug pulling. Also here is where we use the first allotted cheating to steal 700 souls from this guy because I do not like him, and stealing is cool. So after robbing this guy and failing to rob this guy, we skedaddle up the stairs and head right to the elderly taskmaster, who dies of natural causes. Anyway, continuing on, we meet my new best friend, who bestows upon us the ability to summon the ghosts of Christmas past, which is perfect timing because I'm about to create several. You see, this dragon isn't supposed to die. Normally we're supposed to do a 360 and then go a different direction, but the problem is my mother didn't raise a fucking coward, and thus I'm incapable of running away from any fight. So after losing my life several times trying to beat it the old fashioned way, I eventually gave up and found this neat little glitch that allows you to banish him to the Shadow Realm. And now we're free to cross the bridge. After that, we follow in the footsteps of Kara the Wolf, play the bowling minigame, and now it's time to summon the ghost of that conversation that we had 15 seconds ago so that we can go and ring the bell together as friends. These are the gargoyles of the bell. They were specifically handcrafted by Jesus Christ in order to kill dead people, and I am currently not alive. Normally, this fight is supposed to be a challenge of not getting overwhelmed while dealing with two enemies that are both swinging halberds and spitting fire at you. But alternatively, you can bring a friend and change it from an overstimulating nightmare to WWE SmackDown Tag Team Championship Jesus Christ Edition. I think you can guess which one I chose. <laughs> Alright, and with that out of the way, ding dong, and we're off to somewhere else. So before we go to ring the second bell that I uh, forgot to mention, we have some preparation to do. So first we head down to the forest to examine the wildlife and grab the Mr. Dark Souls armor, and then after that we cheat our way through the turn-based boss fight to get some extra souls. Then we go back up, ride this elevator here to- Oop. Then we spend an hour replaying the game to ride this elevator to go back to jail, so that we can create some more corpses for us to attempt to rob, and also to meet up with our old friend who we- turn into a corpse and attempt to rub. And now, we're finally ready to enter the slums known as Great Britain, play their national pastime, try not to get shit, which I failed, and fight their leader Big Ben, where the real challenge is, can you kill two dogs in a row without dying, which is slightly harder than it sounds. So after performing Hidden Jutsu Animal Shelter, we head to the Funny Poop District to take the Mario 64 slide and enter this room that is unnecessarily big. Like it's made to fit some incredibly oversized creature. 
Your mom is very large and very open, so she tends to just use her overwhelming weight to perform full body CBT. However, if you're not paying attention, your mom will grab you and throw you into her vacuous womb and spit you out. But other than seeping discharge and throwing tantrums, that's basically all she can do. As long as you're not incredibly inept, your mom is a pretty easy conquer. I'm sorry, those were all jokes. I'm sure your mother is a wonderful lady. Now that we have the keys to literally just hell, we can go in and turn around and not do that because I do not want to. Instead, we can head down to Cheater's Gully where we take the walk of shame across the loser bridge and enter into... Oh wait, this is just hell again. Welcome to the lovely city of LA, where everything from the ground to the people are filled with toxic smog of varying degrees. Also, the dogs spit fire and there's amalgamations of pain wandering the streets, but once you get past all that, it's almost worth the 5k run. The goal here is to get to the very bottom of this abyss by taking the patented dog elevator and then crossing the LA River where the homeless people live. Then, as a reward for our trials, we get to dig Maneater Margaret Thatcher's corpse out of her grave to serve as a meat shield for our attempt to ring the second bell. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Quilag. She is formerly a woman who was transformed by the Great Deku Tree into a super hot sexy spider woman, and now she has the desire to kill me. Which normally would be awesome, but I'm currently not allowed to die. Her furry sword is long and magical, and her spider has the ability to vomit at will. Which, when combined with her immense cuteness rating, makes her very difficult to attack. But if you think that my arachnophilia is gonna get in the way of my lust for murder, you're dead fucking wrong. Can't you see all of me? I hope you all enjoyed my Shadow the Hedgehog AMV. Anyway, ding dong, the bells have now been rung, which means that the circus is officially in town and I have earned myself a one-way ticket to the Cloud Fiesta. See, Sen in the Dark Souls lore is known as the king of doing a little trolling, so he put a bunch of funny little jeeps and japes in his fortress like murder elevators and trust annihilation devices. But the secret here is that as long as you know that japes are afoot, the entire thing is rather easy. If you have the right equipment. See, back in the forest where we became Mr. Souls, there was actually a secret path that led you to the Yif Ring, which has the power to increase your ability to not fall down, which is the difference between being able to play through Sen's Fortress and being an anemic child in the center of a mosh pit. So after successfully equipping a singular ring, we reached the top of the fortress, finally end slavery, and now it's time to summon Big Fucking Tarkus. See, Big Iron Tarkus is different from other summons in Dark Souls. As soon as he comes out of the ground, you are no longer the main character. There's technically a boss here, but Tarkus can just do it himself. Like, I don't even need to be here. I'm basically just a cheerleader. So, after letting Big Iron Tarkus do some business with this hip, we finally regain our main character-ness and hitch a ride to Ann Orlando. Which I then immediately left because I could not do damage. I instead decided to go back and try to farm for better items and died to a legend Blight Town. But it's fine, that happens. Plus, we were already almost at the goal and it was only run 15, so it shouldn't take much longer. Right? Alright, we're back. It took another 15 runs, but I finally got back to Anor Orlando and cleared out the other other Bell Gargoyle, and now all we have to do is jump off this ledge here to the one below and... I think I need a reset. So after not being able to touch a controller for like a week, I finally decided to stop being a baby and finish this shit. The weekend's here, which means that I'm going to sit the fuck down and not move until I get to the halfway point of this game. So first things first, and now we're back in Anor Orlando. Then we just kill the other other Bell Gargoyle again and step 10 feet to the left of this ledge this time and jump down. Then after a casual tightrope walk, we murder all these panning guardians for murdering my friend and then steal an elevator to get to even more tightrope walking. And now we have to take on the most memorable encounter in the entire game. 
See that guy up there? That is a silver knight. He has a bow the size of a very large bow, and if he hits you with it, you will die. And also there's two of them. So the normal plan is to roll through the arrows and knock him off the edge, but I had a better idea. What if instead I wore Tarkus's armor and made my poise high enough to the point where the arrows wouldn't move me? So interesting fact, that strategy in fact does not work. And we're back again. Sorry, it took a while longer this time because I died again and I had to grind for a Malding side sword because the corpse harvest was not bountiful. But now we're back to the archers. We just have to very carefully roll into the corner and very carefully slam every button in succession until the knight falls down. So after some more meandering, we talk to my best friend again, deal with the constant paranoia that only gets worse the more that I'm rewarded for it, and then we find a solar summon. And a fog wall. Which means that it's about that time. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Ornstein and Smell, the threshold, the fight that makes everyone quit the game. It's kind of like the Bell Gargoyles, but imagine that instead of gargoyles, they're things that can actually kill you. Ornstein dashes around the room like an eight foot tall mosquito, while Smell just tries his absolute best to slam his giant fucking ass into you. But luckily, with Solaire making this into a tag team match, we only really have to worry about one at a time. This fight also features the illusion of choice where you get the option of who to kill first, which changes the second phase. But on my first attempt, I chose incorrectly. And I realized there's only one option. So we go in again, kill Ornstein first this time, and then it's just now E52. I think I just had a four minute long heart attack, but it's over now. We just take the elevator up and get the Lord Vessel after 170 hours. We got to the halfway point of the game after 170 hours. Well, it looks like this is gonna be a longer journey than originally expected, but I'm not giving up just yet. I don't know when it'll be or how long it'll take, but I will see you guys again next time.